Howdy folks, Tom Blake here in the Bay Area. So, you want to get a personal load loop simulation and you want to know what it's doing. So, there are multiple versions available. Uh, for Mac users you can actually get the latest development version which means it's the latest source code compiled. And uh, for Windows users there are versions that you can download as well. And for Linux users your best bet is to download the source and compile because there are so many flavors of Linux it's just easier uh, to get the source and compile. But Linux users tend to be used to that. Um, in addition, yeah, I think it'll compile on various versions of Unix as well through the Linux version too. So, something to look at. Anyway, I'm using uh, this version of Mac OS. So... Not a lot of disk space on the computer. Uh, So, with the bit of luck, we have simulation here. So there are a number of ways to run the Novolate simulation. Uh, one of them is just by double, double clicking. You get a perfectly fine view into the simulation. Uh, you can uh, do a lot of the regular stuff. Incidentally, the documentation is available online, and also this will take you back to the simulation page if you want to get back there for any reason, uh, but I've decided to bundle the documentation in HTML4 if you need it. So, this is the simulation just running, but perhaps a more interesting way to look at the simulation, particularly if you want to see all the features, is through the command line. But let me just give you an overview anyway from this. So what you have here is a simulated landscape, and over the simulated landscape there are these red dots, which are actually the noble lapes. There's a lot of stuff going on in the landscape that you can't actually access through the, the graphics, and we'll get to that through the command line. But basically what it does is it provides you, and I can show you this, a potentially infinite number of fractal landscapes that are created with a weather system running over them, and also a biological system. There are tides, so this is a little bit easier to uh, see in the command line version, uh, but here there are tides, the weather obviously evolves, and there are various other uh, features that may interest you. There are three uh, models that are currently used to represent the Noble Apes, um, kind of general cognitive function, general brain. The first is this uh, reactive brain, where there are sensors in here and actuators, which are like things, um, basically inputs and outputs. And there are ways uh, in which the sensors and actuators um, interact through this uh, cognitive model, which uh, Kind of difficult to see moving around, but you can um, you can get a sense that it's a rotating cube. You can actually see if you're very fast. These are the um, the uh, sensors, and the actuators are actually within the brain, so you can see them a little bit um, through this model. In addition to this, there are social values, which we'll see through the command line, and also uh, there is the uh, brain code. And here what we have is a representation of the external, which is what the noble apes will say to other noble apes, and the internal, which is what they're thinking, uh, associated with themselves. They're also thinking associated with uh, a number of other noble apes as well. But this is what's displayed here. Oh, in addition, you can, um, you can move this out if you want to, if you've got a large screen, you can scale it accordingly so you get a good sense of the uh, landscape. You can... Uh, Turn off the brain code, and you can turn off the brain drawing if you just want to see the environment. Uh, you have various um, windows in. This is the genetics of the specific ape. You can uh, move between apes. This is the direction facing of the ape. Uh, this is the uh, energy of the ape, the energy that it's storing, and this is the ape's relative speed. So this is a very fast moving ape. Well, relatively fast moving, slowing down, getting faster. Here also you have uh, the time uh, and uh, the weather at the specific point. So if we uh, zoom this back up, where is this ape? This ape is here. So you can actually drag the ape around by holding the option key on the Mac. You see we're getting into clouds, it's moving into some rain, we're getting into rain. So this corresponds with the weather environment that the ape is in. 
A more interesting way to run the node late simulation is actually through the command line, which gives you both the graphics and the command line. I, I bundled both of them together. So this puts it in the location, and then you just need to type contents, in this case macOS, uh, and then with a bit of note, simulation, and then the letter C, which is very important, which is that you're going to uh, run the command line component together with the graphics. So what you have here is uh, basically what you had before, but you also have insight into it. So through the command line, you actually get a lot of additional features. So you can uh, so let's have a look at this. Well, that's the command that I just called. You can also call it associated with a specific command. This will load an ape script file. This will save out the file. Uh, this will quit the um, simulation. This will stop the simulation. Uh, there's no late speaking, which we'll uh, potentially get to. But basically, that produces an audio file or a, the characters, basically, that no late is speaking. Uh, you can get information specifically within the internal file format. Um, I'll show you that in a, in a minute. You can run the simulation, you can step through the simulation, uh, you can see the top ape, basically, or the list of top apes, the uh, most talked about apes. Uh, set a time interval if you're stepping. Uh, you can turn the events on, so you see all the events in the simulation. Um, <coughs> this is probably one to demonstrate. Uh, logging on and off, which turns the image and data logging on and off, which is kind of less applicable here. Uh, sim shows the specifications of the specific simulation. Uh, you are able to watch apes, uh, or watch all the underlying stuff or specific things associated with it. Uh, you can track shared ideas between the apes. Uh, you can see the name of the current watched ape. Uh, it'll show you the social graph, so the relationships, uh, the brain code, which we've already seen uh, displayed graphically. It'll show the speech uh, specifically. There's also a model for the vascular system, the respiratory system, and the metabolism uh, within the uh, particular noble apes. It'll show the episodic memory, uh, where the brain probes are located, so that the um, uh, sensor and actuator components. Uh, it'll show statistics associated, the appearance, uh, and the genome value. So, <laughs> so we have a selected noble ape, that's the eight for, that's the genome for uh, Roy Gray Adams. So you can also get a list of all the noble apes. So <laughs> let's set up uh, a run of the simulation. This will just keep it running, basically. Uh, you can see the tides actually in the background, which is quite nice. So, let's turn all the events on. So this is all the events as they're occurring in time, uh, based on all the apes in the simulation. Uh, there's mainly a lot of eating. So we can turn the events off. And then we can just see the social events, which is just uh, any interactions between apes. It's in the evening, which you'd imagine some social events would occur, but probably more will occur in daylight. They do like their sleep. So early days, okay, so that's the first interaction. And we're starting to see the social events occur. So you can run um, both the uh, command line and the graphical version uh, together. So you can select apes if you want to. So as you see, we've just changed the ape that we're watching. Um, you can also set it up, so let's, um, let's turn the events off. So this is the current tape that's being watched, and uh, what you get here is uh, what they're doing currently, their heart rate, their breathing, uh, location, energy, honor, um, the direction that they're facing, uh, their sex, so this is a male ape, obviously, uh, the uh, age and days, and these are the underlying um, Social simulation elements, the drives, uh, the attention to body, so something on the back, uh, relationship attention, and you can see here a collection of kind of friends and enemies, which grows as the mobile apes interact. This is also what's gone on in their episodic memory. So as you see here, swimming, pick up a rock, uh, conversation, uh, a little bit of violence, <laughs> eating seaweed, chewing on a twig, dropping a rock. Um, okay, this is a uh, this is a bug tracking point. Uh, which has mysteriously disappeared very quickly. So yes, there is various bug tracking uh, and kind of debug information through the simulation as well. Uh, but not really need to talk too much on that. It's, it's more for the kind of developer folk. One of the features that I actually um, wanted to show was the addition of territories. 
And uh, originally territories were going to be dynamic, and uh, Bob Mottram, uh, one of the long-term Node Lake developers, uh, added, uh, well, fixed area territories. Uh, but by the way, the maps created the territories also uh, typically, you know, conform to either some islands or islands, um, you know, water, this kind of stuff. But these numbers represent the minutes that each, uh, well, the minutes that the specific selected ape, so this one here, has spent in the individual territories, and it kind of gives you an indication of the roaming. Now, you can select any ape through this and see their own specific territories. So you see as I select the apes, uh, the territories change as well. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, brain code, uh, as we talked about a bit. Uh, and apologies for uh, general jerkiness. So what you hear, what you see here, is the external, internal brain code running against each other. Uh, and when the ape actually meets another ape for conversation, this external communication will be run against the other ape's external communication, and you get some very interesting overlap there. Uh, but yeah, in the future, um, within the next six months, I want to add notions of time and space, uh, because the brain code has relatively re weak notions uh, of events. But I think if there was some discussion, particularly associated with future time. Uh, and space locations, then it would be considerably more powerful because the apes would have motivation to move to particular areas or interact with particular apes in the future, uh, specifically, as, as mandated by language, fundamentally. Um, so that's something that's coming up in the future of the simulation. Uh, there's a lot of bug fixes, a lot of just general work associated with the simulation too, and I do accept all uh, source code contributions. So if you're interested in contributing source code to Noble Ape, please do get involved. Anyway, this was a general overview of the Noble 8 simulation. I'm Tom Barbelay in the Bay Area, signing out.